News Chief Political Analyst Britt Hume. Britt, uh, your thoughts as we watch all of this playing out in this New York courtroom this afternoon, sir? Well, Martha, put yourself in the position of an American citizen watching this, someone not dedicated to Trump nor, nor a Trump hater, worried about the world, worried about Russia and China becoming more united, worried about the stalemate in Ukraine, worried about inflation and the possibility of recession in this country, worried about the lawlessness at the border and the lawlessness on our streets. And he looks at this and he says, well, we're going to have an election in a couple of years. Who are we going to get? Well, Joe Biden is going to, apparently going to run again. He's the person under whose watch these circumstances I just described arose. Uh, he's also going to be, what, 82 years old when Election Day rolls around. Uh, many people think he's too old, that he's, that he's is senescent, if not utterly senile. And on the other hand, the prospect seems to be clear now that we'll have Donald Trump again, a man who today stands indicted and, and arraigned in a, in a district, in a, uh, in a court in New York City uh, on charges that many legal experts think are flimsy and should be thrown out. It is not a moment that I think most people will find inspiring. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right about that. And uh, the list that you just gave us of all of the concerns going on in the world, I think about it in terms of here in Manhattan as well, Britt, when you look at uh, an increase in serious crime of 22 percent, uh, and we have a district attorney who has focused a lot of his attention on uh, moving things from felony to misdemeanor. And in this case, he's going from misdemeanor to felony. Uh, he's made it quite clear that he wanted to get this former president, Britt. Um, how do you think that all sits with the American people as they watch this? Well, I must say I was struck by what was, I guess it was a CNN poll in the last couple of days, in which a distinct minority, 37 percent, thought there was, a, a, that a crime was involved here. But 60 percent were in support of the indictment. Which means that an awful lot of people who don't think he did anything were, were, were happy to see him pursued anyway. That's a little disturbing, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would. I, I would. Um, and we've seen those numbers. And when you have a majority of people who say they think that the motivation is political, but they'd like to see the person indicted anyway, I think it really it puts a fine point, Britt, on, on what we've seen happen in this country, just very intense division across this country over the last six years or so. And, you know, I just wonder um, if it's responsible to take this action that we're seeing happen in New York. And we know we're going to go down this road several more times in Georgia and in this special counsel's investigation as well. Yeah, and you have to wonder whether not just this case, but any of the cases being contemplated really rise to the level uh, that would mean that they're necessary to bring. Um, in light of the fact that he is a former president with an ardent following of some significant segment of the Republican uh, base uh, and the, you know, the feeling of alienation and disgust and, and, uh, and distaste that, that those people will feel. Now, look, uh, these, these people working on a case like this exist like the Attorney General of the United States exists, at the intersection of law and politics. And, you know, you, 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 you're supposed to keep the two separate, but they, in some cases, are inextricably intertwined. And that is the case here with Donald Trump. So what we would hope for in a situation like this is kind of the utmost in prosecutorial discretion. In other mm -hmm. words, I could bring a case, uh, uh, but maybe it would be wiser not to. Uh, one wonders about the wisdom uh, of this case, and certainly one wonders even also about the wisdom of some of these other cases that may be brought. Yeah, it's a great point. And my mind goes back to James Comey uh, standing in front of the cameras with a long list of, uh, I think he used the word, reckless behavior on the part of Hillary Clinton back then, and then said, but no prosecutor would bring these charges. And I, and I think, you know, there is, it does feel uh, like there are not you know, we, we've talked a lot about adults in the room and looking at the big picture um, of the country and what's best for the country overall. It feels like that's a layer that we don't really operate in a whole lot anymore, Brett. No, I agree with that. And I, you know, I think, you know, we, this would be a moment where statesmanship would be called for. It seems, alas, to be somewhat in short supply.
Indeed it does. Um, I, I want, do we have the soundbite, you guys, from that press conference? Or We're, we're not going to cut away to that because we may be watching him walk out. We'll, we'll get to that later. Um, Britt, thank you. Stand by for us if you would. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.